All right, continuing on. So now we will do the new addition to the league. We have Lauren with the team drafted by Olivia. I still don't really get the name Tampa Rainbow Six Seagers. Like, I'm not, I don't really understand. There are a lot of like fun names. This one doesn't, doesn't really make sense. You could have done a name about Chris Godwin even. Um, but we'll kind of dive into it. Uh, rookie team. Rookie drafter for another rookie owner for a rookie team. So we'll see how things go. So, 24 overall, $15, Josh Allen. I had Josh Allen last year. Uh, he was the best quarterback in fantasy. Uh, he was uh, probably the runner-up in the MVP uh, voting. Uh, 4,400 yards, 36 touchdowns, 760 three yards rushing, another six touchdowns rushing. I don't think he'll be quite as good. <sighs> they are very pass-heavy and aggressive, but the offensive coordinator, Brian Dable, is gone from Buffalo. So I think I'll get his 4,000 yards passing. I think I'll get 33 touchdowns, 34, around there. But maybe a little less rushing, maybe like 650 and seven touchdowns or so. Uh, but he's still like a top three fancy quarterback. Um, he's tremendous. 15 bucks is <laughs> an underpay for a guy who might be the MVP. But again, quarterback historically in our league is very under <laughs> underpaid, especially in auction. They are just not valued. So, yeah, no, I don't mind it. It's... He, he's underpaid. Every quarterback in our league is underpaid, really. Um, very next pick, 25 overall, 45, Stefan Diggs. Boy, we have a lot of teams that I just, maybe, I don't know if it's me, but it just feels like there's a lot of you guys stacking a quarterback and receiver. So now we have, let's see, so we have Brian started it off, essentially for me, with uh, Devontae Smith and, yeah, Devontae Smith and Jalen Hurts. I know Sarah's doing Devontae Adams and Derek Carr. We also have Russell Wilson and Jerry Judy for Andre. I didn't realize it, but we also have Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins for, <laughs> for Justin. Um, Mac has Michael Gallup. And Dak Prescott. Man, you got... I don't... There's, it's kind of crazy. I mean, Eileen has Justin Jefferson and Kirk Cousins. So there's like a whole bunch of y'all. Like, double stacking the quarterback with a wide receiver. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we're doing that. So your first two picks, both Buffalo guys. I mean, pass-heavy offense. Diggs has really elevated Josh Allen's game once he's arrived in Buffalo. Um, he was the number seven receiver last year, so 45 is right about right. Um, he's never finished lower than eighth among receivers in snaps, targets, receptions, touchdowns, and yards. He saw a career high in 20 end zone targets last year. Um, his efficiency wasn't as good, but his volume more than made up for it. it actually made it better so i don't know if he'll get his 1200 yards 10 touchdowns again i mean that's a lot he's a little bit worse than like you know we already we've been through this already so like 1900 yards for cooper cup uh 1600 yards for Debo samuel uh 1500 yards for Devonte adams 1600 yards no 1700 yards for Debo samuel 1600 yards for justin jefferson Elite of the elite. So, a little bit worse than all of those guys, but, you know, that's why he's a little, he costs a little bit less. But I like Diggs. Diggs is among the top five route runners in football. I, again, I think the best route runner in football is Keenan Allen, but I think Diggs has more talent than Keenan Allen athletically. Um, and he's very, very good. Very, very good route runner. So, maybe like 1,100 yards and like eight touchdowns. Rock solid number one top ten receiver. 45, about, about the right price. 30th pick, so five picks later, $41 Cam Akers. 
So this is definitely a dice roll. Um, Akers basically missed most last year with a torn Achilles. Um, Achilles are a scary injury, especially for a running back. They sap almost all of your explosiveness. It basically, the Achilles was the end of Kobe Bryant's career. Um, it's basically been the end of Marlon Mack's career. Um, I don't know what it's going to do to James Robinson. We'll see what happens to Cam Akers. But he came back basically towards in the playoffs when uh, Daryl Henderson was hurt. And he was bad. It was the Sonny Michelle show because Cam Akers was just genuinely bad. So they've been kind of cautious with him in the preseason. He's healthy. Um, I mean, this was this was the number one fantasy running back, Todd Gurley, five years ago. Um, but, you know, the once you hit that cliff's edge and fall, it's gone. So I need to see it. For now, I think he'll get the workload because they like workhorse backs. I don't think it's a timeshare as much. Um, he's a major breakout candidate because he's always had the talent. It's just a matter of will the injury have sapped his explosiveness. I think he might get the long speed back, but I'm not sure about the explosiveness. Um, we'll say 1,000 yards uh, rushing, maybe 250 yards receiving, 10 touchdowns because it's high, high-powered offense, which makes him roughly top 15-ish um, running back, which which is good for 41. You're getting him at the discount because of the injury, uh, but right around what he's deserving of, so I don't I don't mind that. And then we wait another five picks, $26, Deontay Johnson. I am a Steelers fan. I like Deontay Johnson quite a bit. He got his extension uh, very quietly, you know, DK Metcalf and Debo Samuel and Terry McLaurin and A.J. Brown and Deontay Johnson, also in that receiver class. Um... It was his breakout year last year, but he's honestly been very good in fantasy. I think I'm not really sure how to make of the QB change. The offensive line's not very good in uh, Pittsburgh. Johnson was a top 10 receiver last year with Big Ben because he was hitting him all over the place underneath. I think, I don't believe in Mitchell Trubisky. I think it'll be Kenny Pickett's time at some point. When that will be, I don't know. Um, but without Ben Roethlisberger, De- Deontay Johnson doesn't have the rapport. So it's a big unknown with the passing attack in Pittsburgh. So we'll kind of split the difference. We'll say 1,000 yards receiving maybe like four touchdowns, which makes him like a solid wide receiver two, which is exactly what he is for you because you already have the wide receiver one in Stephon Diggs. So kind of kind of middling along with good players. Um, 45 overall, $20, Jalen Waddle. Okay, I mean, Waddle had a breakout year uh, as a rookie last year for Miami. There wasn't a whole lot around him, so, I mean, he didn't get a lot of goal line. He didn't get a lot of red zone work, but he's good in between the tackles. I think bringing over Mike McDaniel and fixing the offensive line, Taron Arm, Taron Armstead, man, he's really good left tackle. Uh, but fixing the offensive line will definitely help get this Miami offense to greater heights. We'll see if Tua is the guy, but he can't be as bad as he was last year. He's got to be at least serviceable. Uh, so the real issue for Waddle is he's competing for target share with Tyree Kill, and Tyree Kill, in my eyes, is a number one bona fide receiver. They're paying Tyree Kill $20 million a year to be the guy. So, I think he's taking a step back. I don't think he's going to hit 100 receptions. I don't think he's going to get 1,000 yards. Maybe like 900, and he'll get his six touchdowns, which makes him like a a low-end wide receiver two, high-end wide receiver three, which is exactly what he is on your team. So, we're getting getting the price at exactly what the player is. We're paying face value for it. So, Olivia's doing a pretty good job of just filling the holes and kind of like addressing the needs right now. So we like that. 54 overall, $15, Chris Godwin. So I know Lauren liked this pick. Godwin, personally, I'm not really a Godwin fan, to be completely honest. He's just a slot receiver who's decently good at getting open, but if I had to choose, like, the Hunter Renfros of the world, Deontay Johnson, 
There's a lot of slot guys you can get on the cheap. I don't think giving him $20 million a year coming off a torn ACL is wise. But he has Tom Brady, so he will get the workload. Um, he was having an excellent season last year because Brady was feeding him the ball so much, and he's in his prime. So I don't think he's a number one receiver. Um, but based on workload, I mean, what? How many games he played last year? I mean, he's missed nine games in the last three years. But he was he was like the seventh best fantasy wide receiver before he got hurt. So I think he'll probably be healthy around week four. I think that's super aggressive. I'm surprised. Um, but if it was me, I'd probably wait even to like mid-October, at least, at least until like week six or seven. But... They're being aggressive with him. I think he's going to have to share more target share with Russell Gage and Julio Jones now. So not as crazy explosive as last year. He's got to get time to recuperate. But I could see him because if he owns the slot and the Bucks are paying him this much and Brady's going to be, they're going to be a very, very, they were the most pass heavy. They had the most pass attempts in the league last year. So I can see close to 900 yards. Gets like six touchdowns. He's like a wide receiver two when he's healthy, if he's healthy, whenever that is. So he's probably your flex. So we filled a lot of really good holes. Um, we have a big hole at RB2, which I'm wondering about. But we've basically got the lineup set once Godwin comes back. Um, we go Tyra Lockett, 89 $4. Okay. So Lockett was very good. He's uh what? He's been a top twenty wide receiver the last four years. The only other guys to do that the last four years are Keenan Allen and Mike Evans. So he's super duper safe. Uh but Russell Wilson is gone after ten years in Seattle. And I'm not a Drew Lock Geno Smith fan. I guess Geno Smith's the starter. I'm also very much not a Pete Carroll fan. He wants to run the ball. So, like, Lockett's talented, but he ain't getting close to 1,200 yards again. I don't see him as a top 20 receiver, if only because Seattle's not good. The O-line's bad. The quarterbacks are bad. Uh, I like Kenneth Walker at running back. I, I like Lockett and Metcalf, but they take a big, big nosedive because the drop from Russell Wilson... Even if Russell Wilson, you want to say, is above average, we won't say great. We'll say above average. Let's say Russell Wilson's like a top 10 quarterback. Yeah. Geno Smith's not a top 32 quarterback. Um, he's a backup on probably every other team in the league. I would take Jimmy Garoppolo over him. I'd take Baker Mayfield over him. Um, yeah, there's a lot of quarterbacks I would take over. Tyrod Taylor. Uh, goodness. So... 900 yards, four touchdowns. He's a borderline flex guy, but, you know, four bucks. It's a nice little value. Not really necessary because where's our second running back? We need a starting running back. Where is it? Uh, 93 overall, Darren Waller, three bucks. Good value. Waller's been an elite uh, tight end on some times. He got 19 targets in week one, which was nuts. Um, but he was pretty injured last year so I think he'll be better this year I think actually getting Devontae Adams actually kind of helps him because he's not the number one anymore and he can really like sneak under the radar and he's still 29 so I think he's right around he's right around what like Rich paid essentially for like Brandon Ayuk if I'm being honest so he's right around like a top 35-ish wide receiver, so that's like a flex, flexious, flex kind of wide receiver kind of guy. So I like him, so maybe close to 900 yards and like five touchdowns, just like we just did with Lockett. But again, that doesn't really matter because, I mean, we got Diggs, we got Johnson, we got Waddle, we got Lockett who can play for Wall, for uh, Godwin. We have Godwin, obviously, whenever he gets back healthy. Now we have Waller. So we have one two, three, four, five, six pass catchers. Still no second running back. Um, 95 overall, $3 Aaron Rodgers. 
Aaron Rodgers was the MVP last year. Uh, he was tremendous. He was the fifth best quarterback in fantasy. Uh, 34, 37 touchdowns, 4,100 yards. Um, even got 100 yards rushing and three touchdowns, funny enough. Devontae Adams is gone, so that's bad. I don't really know who the... Um, yeah, I don't really know who the... Who the no, I mean, I guess it's Alan Lazard. I mean, we have Alan Lazard and Sammy Watkins and Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs and, and Amari Rogers. Those are our five receivers. None of those guys, I think, is even like worthy of being a number two receiver, if I'm being completely honest. So the fact that there's got to be a number one now, that's bad. Really, I think we're just feeding Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. But even before Devontae Adams... Aaron Rodgers has, in 13 of his 14 years as a starting quarterback, he's never finished lower than ninth in fantasy. He's been a top 10 quarterback every 13 out of 14 years. The only year he wasn't was the year he was injured. So he's trade bait. He is classic trade bait for you, especially because, like, I'm sure Robbie's going to ask for an arm and a leg for, like, Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson, whereas with you, I imagine you just need a running back with a pulse. Um, also, this is where I imagine, like, we've spent, there was a $7 TJ Watt in there. I usually just ignore the defense players, but, you know, TJ Watt's an elite player. The problem is, we've now spent 7 $2 on Bobby Wagner, $4 on Tyler Lockett, $3 on Darren Waller, and $3 on Aaron Rodgers. So that is a grand total of $19, and still no second running back. Now, we'll diverge from that. Well, that's an important point later. So we'll come back to that. Um, next, 103, $6, Chase Claypool. Uh, so Claypool, two years ago as a rookie, had lots and lots of touchdowns. He was very, um, that was really what made him for Justin. He had a four-touchdown game in one game where he really went off. But he was about the 37th best receiver last year. So kind of like Brandon Ayuk, Tyler Lockett, um, Darren Waller range is what I got Claypool. I like him. Um, he's on the Steelers. He's at, with Juju gone, he's probably, again, a flex guy. Uh, he's in the slot with George Pickens taking the number two job. We'll get to that. But, again, around 850, 900 yards, four or five touchdowns. Uh, like him. Still got to figure out what we're doing with Mitch Trubisky, uh, Kenny Pickett. Matt Cannon is the offensive coordinator. I remember when he was at Maryland. I mean, we're running the ball a lot with Najee. But really, it's just like, can the quarterbacks be, like, average? If they can be average, then we got we, we can cook something. But if they're Mitch Trubisky in Chicago, then this is not. There, no one except for Deontay Johnson is really going to matter. So, okay. I mean, oh, I should also mention... This doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because you already have Deontay Johnson on the same team. So you're double dipping at a pass catcher on the same team. Just like I recommended on Rich's video, I will recommend it on your video. You guys probably ought to make a trade where you trade away Chase Claypool and he trades away Brandon Ayuk. They're around the same range. You paid around the same price. Their outcomes are about the same. Their potential's around the same. So like... You know, what do I know? But, yeah, he ought to split up Kittle and Ayuk, and you ought to split up Deontay Johnson and Claypool. It makes too much sense. 142, we took Zach Ertz, so second tight end. We have since cut him. Um, we took, we uh, so we'll just go down. Raheem Mostert, 161, $3. This was kind of like the saving grace, um, Olivia really needed to take a running back at this point. She finally got some one. And lo and behold, funny enough, she took the right one. Um, Mostert was the starter last year before he got hurt in San Francisco. He's always been impressive when he plays. He's 30 years old now, but his 5.7 yards per carry is the most in NFL history for anyone over 200 carries. It's a fun little stat for you. So... Of course, he only has 284 career carries because he's always been injured. He has played more than 11 games one time. That was 2019. But 
he was always the starter in San Francisco because talent. So now he's in a timeshare with Chase Edmonds. He's basically a running back four, if I'm being honest. For you, he's a starter because we literally did not pick another running back. Um, so we'll say around 750 carries, six touchdowns, maybe even 100 yards receiving. So 850 carries, which puts him at a very, very low in RB4, but he's your starter. But now we'll kind of go into it because at 170, we took Jahan Dotson and for $3 and we've since cut him. So like... This is a thing that people do when they come in the league. Alex and Hannah did the same thing two years ago. And I always tell people, it's like, hey, running back's gold. You ought to, like, get a really good running back. Maybe get some receivers in there because you can get a deal. But you really got to hammer out running back. And it doesn't matter how – it's it's going to be the same thing for, like, the other teams. Uh, Charlie, um, Eileen, um, even Ryan here. It doesn't matter – how good your receivers are if you have no running backs. It doesn't matter. So, like, if Cam can't, it just, like, it's it's as simple as that. Uh, if you have no running backs, you have no hope. So, it doesn't matter if six dollars chase Claypool's a good deal. It doesn't matter if TJ Watt's elite defensive end and you're paying him seven dollars. It doesn't matter if Tyler Lock's a good deal at four dollars. It doesn't matter if Aaron Rodgers is trade bay at three dollars. Doesn't matter if Darren Waller's good at three dollars. Once you fill all the starting roles, then we can start working on the bench. But you ha you gotta fill the starting roles. And I think Olivia was just like, she was worried about just like you know I'm trying to nominate someone. I'm trying to get a running back. You're not going to get a deal on running back. You just gotta like see someone no get nominated and just go after the guy. And bidding on the other players in between trying to get a deal wasn't going to work. Uh, all of that other depth doesn't matter if you don't have any running backs because they're the lifeblood of fantasy. That's typically, we'll say typically, it's not always the case, but typically that is how you win championships. So not to just be discouraging or anything, I'm just trying to make sure this is why we are where we are. It's okay. We ended up cutting, Lauren ended up cutting Zach Ertz, Dollar, Jahan Dotson, $3. We cut them. We picked up Mike Davis and Damian Williams. Not terribly exciting. Mike Davis is maybe the backup in Baltimore, Baltimore with um, Gus Edwards on the uh, physically unable to perform list. He'll probably get... He was okay in Atlanta last year as the starter. Not great. He'll probably be only relevant for like the first few weeks. Uh, they have Kenyon Drake. we got to see how that backfield unravels. Same kind of thing with Damian Williams. Um, he is behind Cordero Patterson, but Cordero Patterson breaks out at wide receiver a lot in Atlanta. And maybe the rookie Tyler Algier, who I have, steals that job. But, you know, Williams is a solid player. He was the number one for Kansas City on their title run three years ago um, once they got rid of Kareem Hunt. So, yeah, I mean, he's essentially a situational player, but you can put him in in a pinch. Same kind of thing with Mike Davis. So even though obviously their projections are much less than the players we got rid of, which were Ertz and Dotson, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter because we just need to fill the hole that is running back. So I will repeat it before and we'll do it again. Late in a draft, if you have two or three running backs and you're sitting on some money. I don't give a damn how good the receivers are on the board. Spend the money on a running back. Now, if you get in some sort of weird, like if you get in a bidding war with someone like Stefan, you know, push that bidding war. Let let him have his sixth running back for $23. If that's really what he wants to do, just do it. Just let him do it. Let him spend the money. And you can just, like, keep trying. But you got to keep trying to get that running back. Don't worry about the other stuff. Because until you fill out the starting lineup, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, Tyler Lockett at $4 is nice. You know, Chase Claypool's a nice player at 6 bucks. Um, TJ Watt's going to be elite as a defensive end. All of that stuff is nice. But if I have, like, a four-point running back and all of that, and my bench slot's like, oh, I got nine-point wide receivers on my bench slot. That doesn't matter because 
that four point running back's gonna kill you. It's basically gonna be like like an anchor tied to your tied to your leg. It's gonna kill you every single week because every single week you're going to have the worst starter in the lineup between the two teams. And it's going to be at running back. And even more so than that, if you have an injury at running back, you are dead. So, again, for future draft history, if people don't believe me, like, I'm not saying you got to hammer away like Robbie, like a harbinger, and just get, like, all of the running backs and hoard all of them and spend all of your money on that. It's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is, like, you got to get at least three or four. You got to at least budget at least $70 towards running back. You may not like it. It may not be fun. You may go kicking and screaming. But that is really the difference between, like, making the playoffs every year and being Charlie and making the playoffs once every 10 years. Charlie has two running backs. Is it going to work? I mean, it worked once in our nine years. Will it work again? Probably not. Why is that? Because once you have an injury, then you're dead. So, not to reiterate and be a dead horse, but make sure you get running backs. All of this other stuff is nice. They're good values for good players, but it doesn't really matter. Like, is Tyler Lockett really ever going... Like, what's the difference between, like, Tyler Lockett and Darren Waller and Chase Claypool? It, it, they're all they're all the same. I mean, they're good players. They're startable. I mean, they could start on other teams, even. That probably over some of the other players on other teams. But if I don't have any running backs, like, it doesn't matter. Because, like, I can't start all of them. I can only start four receivers. Four receivers and or tight ends. At most, I still got to start two running backs. So be careful. Don't fall in love. When you start falling in love with these deals for receivers, you're just like, oh, this is a great deal. It is a good deal. But you're only getting the good deal because other people see that they need depth at the most important position in fantasy. And you got to go chase that depth. You can't. It's just like you were just, Olivia was saying. It's like, I'm nominating running backs. I'm not getting them. It's like, yeah, because you're never going to get a deal. You just got to sit on your money. Someone nominates running back, and you push it and try and get that running back. If you don't get him, you wait till the next one, and you try again. And you keep trying until you get one. So, like, that's just the short and long of it. And there were some there were some deals. Kareem Hunt went for seven. Um, hell, Charlie got Melvin Gordon for seven. I don't even like Melvin Gordon. That's a good deal. Um, Miles Sanders went for three. Uh, Antonio Gibson went for seven. So, you know, those are the type of things you got to do. You just, you got to get the running back. You got to walk before you can run. We're running with receivers, and all these depth receivers don't matter because I'm never going to be able, even if I'm going to be able to, like, play them, I guess, during bye weeks or something, if I don't fill my second starting role, it's going to, I'm going to have an anchor tied to me. So, at the very least, though, and to Olivia's credit, she happened to get the one back way, way, way on the back end who is splitting carries with Chase Edmonds and is fancy relevant and has a place and has talent. So she probably might not have meant to do that, but she did it. So it worked out, and I'm happy for her. And I like Raheem Mostert. Um, he's, honestly, he's like, if he could stay healthy, he's a $25, $30 player. I Personally, I think he has more talent than Elijah Mitchell, who has replaced him in San Francisco. The problem is he's always hurt. So Lauren's going to have to do some work. Um, we're probably going to want to trade Aaron Rodgers. Again, you ought to probably consider trading Chase Claypool to Rich for Brandon Ayuk, and you guys just do it. Uh, but you gotta you got to probably go find a running back and kind of figure it out. Again, I have very low expectations. You're a rookie team. So I don't expect you to make the playoffs. Just have fun. Enjoy it. Pull some upsets. The team, Olivia, it, the team's not barren. It's got some depth. So you definitely will be able to win some weeks against some of the uh, lower-ranked teams for sure. I think even, yeah, I, you're you're a favorite in the first week of the season that, right now against Ryan. So, you know, kind of just piece, piece your way into it. I hope Olivia ha- enjoys it and watches it and gets something out of it. But um, 
I don't have too much else to say, to be completely honest with you. Oh, yeah, what are we doing? What are we doing for a grade? Um, well, we're going to give this team a C. It's right about average, uh, because we notice in this league, when someone comes in, they usually struggle to address running backs because they fall in love with the deals at receiver on the back end. It just, it just always happens. So right about average. It's about an average draft. Getting Mostert really, really helped because he actually looks pretty good. Um, picking up Davis and Damian Williams gives us at least a little bit of depth, um, so we're not at the very bottom of the league. And we have some good receivers. Once, I mean, if Godwin comes back and he's is who he is, we're really leaning heavily on Diggs, Johnson, Waddle, and um, Godwin. And that could work. If one of them has a big day, we could win some games. So, And we got Josh Allen. Um, and we got a trade bait in Aaron Rodgers. So it's not barren. Uh, but again, maybe we can make a play a playoff run, depending on how we trade things. But we gotta we got to make sure that running, we're okay at running back first. So... Yeah, not bad. Not bad, Olivia. Good luck to Lauren. We'll see how this goes.